I'm sorry, my video cut off on my other phone. Um, I completely forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> I don't want to go through editing and trying to compile these videos together, so I'm not even going to do it. But um, I think the last thing I was talking about was, um, yeah, the parallel, the parallel between, um, of course, the woman like being bald or being shaven. Um, with the head covering being a symbol, it's actually, that's actually great symbolism to compare head, head covering to because, um, a woman not having hair or having short hair or, um, her head being bald or whatever is unnatural because the father says that a woman's long hair is her glory, is her covering. So it's like in parallel to that, he's basically saying um, it's unnatural for women to have short hair because I made you to have long hair. So it's unnatural for you to be anti-submissive because as a woman, your true nature, what I made you to be is to submit to authority, to submit to God first and then to your husband second. So if head covering is a symbol showing your submission as a daughter of Eve, I should say a second daughter of Eve, you know, before she fell, <laughs> you know, um, the head covering just more so represents uh, the submission that was there before she left her covering, before she fell through defiance and rebellion against her husband and against God. So that is why the Christian woman head covers. A lot of people don't know that. That's why they don't really feel obligated or responsible to head cover as a Christian because they're getting so many different teachings from different sources that has nothing to do with the biblical purpose and why you should be head covering. It don't have nothing to do with your looks or you dressing modestly. It's modest by default because you're veiled, you know, but that's not what it represents. It represents authority and submission and your authority and your submission to authority is your covering for you. So I watched some head covering teachings and they're, they teach it right that the covering, when they read like 1 Corinthians 11 and like they're going through it, they're like doing the Bible study teaching. They are right that the covering is the woman's head and her authority. That would be her husband and the father. That is true. That is her covering. But they teach it in a way to insinuate that it's not a physical covering that you have to wear. And I disagree with that. I feel like it is a physical covering that you have to wear. It just so happens that the physical scarf and the covering is a symbol for that headship and authority that 1 Corinthians 11 is talking about. So they're both true. Yes, my husband is my covering. Yes, father is my covering. But my head covering is the seal and the symbol by which I communicate my submission to that authority that you're teaching about. So they, they try to make it seem like you don't have to head cover. It was just saying that your husband... It's, it's like Holy Spirit made it very clear to me that it's definitely not just about the actual entities, okay? He actually does want you to wear the protective seal because it also communicates to the spirit realm that you are submitted to that authority about which 1 Corinthians is teaching about. So, yeah. So, um, that's three points for you sisters who, like some of y'all were telling me, like, oh, I still struggle with the head covering thing. Well, now there's no more reason to struggle because now you know why you should be doing it, okay? You know what purpose it serves now and it should make you happy now. It, I feel like a revelation like that or a teaching or providing understanding for why we should do certain things really encourages you to want to do it rather than just somebody telling you that you have to do it because the Bible says to. I mean, honestly, that should be enough, but people twist scripture so much and they pick and choose what they feel like is valid and invalid and it is very much true that sometimes things are not as literal or um as it may seem in the bible so that's understandable and that's why there should be actual teachings and understanding provided for why we should do things the bible tells us to do so you have the understanding now it is a seal and it is a symbol to represent your submission and your respect and your honor to god as your authority figure and your husband uh, as your authority figure and the reason why it goes against nature for a woman to be uncovered is because it is against your nature for you to be superior in authority over your husband or a male figure you're a woman you're a rib you came from adam's rib so you're already here to be subject to man you're here to be subjected to man as authority and head this is a seal to represent that, that you should be wearing. It's no different than you work at Kroger, you work somewhere, and they give you a shirt with their logo and their company name on it, right? So you can't be like, well, 
I don't have to wear this Kroger shirt. I don't have to wear this HEB or this corporation logo shirt. I work here. That should be enough. Anybody can come up in here and see that I work. Actually, first of all, boo, I actually can't come in the store and tell that you work here because you look like everybody else. So how am I supposed to know that you work at HEB? I don't see you wearing a red HEB shirt like everybody else do. So bump that somewhere else. So I mean, it's the same thing in the faith. Like, I don't know why this is a concept that Christians can't understand. And actually, Holy Spirit just gave that to me. That's what it means. So people are meant to recognize your set apart lifestyle by the symbol by which you wear. It's not saying that the cloth in and of itself has power. It's the symbol behind the cloth that has the power and what it means and what it represents that God is pleased with. And that, yes, he does instruct you to wear. A lot of things are symbols that are godly symbols that you should be wearing. You know, so I guess it depends on how you look at it. I guess Christians just see it as, well, I don't really feel like a piece of cloth or me wearing a scarf on my head really dictates my relationship with God or really, you know, determines whether I'm a Christian or not. It may not determine whether you're a Christian or you're born again, but it does determine your obedience to God when he has a blatant principle in his Bible, when he told you that you're supposed to obey it and you're not obeying it. So I don't care whether you're a Christian or not. You're defying his authority by saying you don't have to do it when he clearly said that you do have to do it. So taking that comparison, the HEB or, you know, us working at a place or a corporation or a company or whatever a business, and we all have to wear a uniform. So for what? Why are you wearing the uniform? So that we can represent the company that we're working for. And also when customers come in, I can automatically identify who works here that can assist me because you're dressed in the proper attire. It is a symbol. It is a sign that I work here. I'm here to assist you. Okay. And I am one of the coworkers that you can identify me by. So it's the same thing for a head covering for Christian women in the faith. If they speak our language, if it's a man of God, if it's a brother, and he know what that scripture say about head covering, and he see you in a head covering, all right. <laughs> so she's submissive. She's submissive to authority. She understands her role as a woman. She's going to make a good wife. That's what it should <laughs> communicate. I understand every sister has not come into the revelation of head covering yet. That's why I'm making these videos. So I'm just saying but that's what it means. So if that's a brother in Christ or another sister in Christ, you know, that's how we, it's kind of like a dog whistle a little bit. That's how we understand and communicate to each other. How else would you identify your brothers and sisters in the faith unless they weren't obeying certain principles that scripture already says? You know, um, yes, Muslim women do head cover. There are different, you know, uh, religions that head cover, but I'm just saying in the Christian faith in our community, um, if I saw another sister in the faith that was head covering, for me, because I know what the Bible says about head covering, I know that this is a sister that submitted to God because that's what she's communicating to me, like a dog whistle. We understand each other. This is our language, the symbolism. I know what that means. You get it, <laughs> okay? Hopefully you're not just doing it because somebody else told you to and there's really no true desire in your heart to obey God in that way, so you're just doing it out of legalistic means. That's different, you know? So... Yeah, I'm tired of people saying that certain things that they wear or don't wear doesn't dictate their relationship or their Christianity when it does, if it plays into your obedience in scripture, blatantly saying that you probably should or should not be wearing those things. If you were to actually look up the origin of what you're wearing and what you practice and what the Bible has to say about it, it does play into your Christianity and what that speaks about you because you're, you're misrepresenting the kingdom and the God that you claim to serve. So yeah, honey, it does speak a lot about your Christianity. What, what, what good is it to boast about having the Holy Spirit and believing in Jesus as your Savior if you're not even obedient to him? You know, so let's take it back to the root. Let's take it back to the foundation of what the Bible says, okay? All this religious jargon that's being talked about amongst this, if, if they are true saints to begin with, first of all. But amongst the saints, I hear so many Christian women talk like that. Well, I can wear makeup. I can wear wigs. It doesn't affect my relationship. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Because all things that you're wearing belong to familiar spirits. So yeah, it's definitely affecting your relationship with God. It's more than likely blocking the flow or the intimacy that you can, you could have with God had you not been wearing it. You don't know that because what you have with him right now, you think is the best that you could possibly get. So yeah, it's messing up your relationship with God. You know what I don't get? What I don't understand is... 
let's let, let's just say these things were okay to wear. Let, let's say just hypothetically it was okay for us to wear makeup and all this other pagan stuff, which is proven to be pagan. People act like they can't research that for themselves and clearly see it did come from Egypt, but okay. Let's say you can wear this stuff. My thing is, I don't understand why you came into the Christian faith. You came into a faith that is already connected to a Hebraic lifestyle by origin, by default. So, but when it comes to converting to its traditions, your Christian faith's traditions, its precepts, its commandments, its customs, and its way of living, you have an issue with converting to that, but you have no issue with claiming that that same God of the Bible, that same Jesus of the Bible that encouraged all those very same things that you're opposing and keeping your pagan lifestyle. That doesn't make sense to me. You know how other religions would look at us who are, who are doing that? Oh, so you're not really a Christian. Because the way that they understand religion is, if I know that your Bible says to do this, 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 that, and the third, and I don't see you doing that, so, oh, so you're not really Pentecostal. That's, that's how they would see this. So you're not really Christian then, you're just something else. And you're gonna argue, no, I am Christian. I just don't feel like those things dictate. And they're gonna be like, that doesn't make sense. It's in your Bible. Duh, it don't make sense. They're just disobedient. <laughs> you know, like, you know, there, there's a lot of Muslims, like they will tell Christians who head cover. I'm actually surprised to see you head covering because it's in y'all's Bible. And I don't understand why Christian women don't head cover when I've read the Bible and it's in there. Does that make sense? No, it does not make sense. You have a lot of disobedience. For some reason, Christians feel like they don't have to they don't have to live the, the lifestyle promoted and encouraged in the Bible that they claim to read and the God they claim to serve. You clearly don't belong to him in that faith. You're not even doing what it says. You kind of made your own like Burger King have it your way Christianity. Like that's not that's not biblical Christianity. You're not really serving the true Yahweh if you're doing that. You know? So yeah, these things are they are a seal and they are a symbol to communicate something to the surrounding entities, just like a, a logo for a corporation or a company would have. Um, and that's enough, especially if the company gave it to you, they're requiring you to wear it, obviously, if they gave you the shirt. So there is a purpose behind it. The same way father obviously gave it to you to wear through his word, through his commandments. There's a purpose behind it. So how do you think that boss or, you know, the head of this corporation would feel if he walked into the store and he sees that you're basically not in uniform? This is our uniform, women of God. Well, you're not in uniform. What you going to tell him? Well, I don't have to wear it because I work. <laughs> he will get fired. <laughs> you're getting fired today. He's going to remind you of that policy, what that policy said in writing, you know, in ink. You signed it. You read it, didn't you? I hope you can read. God forbid you're working in my establishment and you can't read. Because a lot of Christians act like they can't read. Right? Yeah, they do. So I hope that you can read what it said and what I expected of you when you started working in my establishment. Why aren't you wearing your shirt? Why aren't you in proper uniform? I wrote the policy. I dictate what the policy is. And you're going to tell me that you don't have to wear my company logo on your shirt to be identified with my company in the way I want to run things here, you're delusional and you can leave. And you can go to whatever delusional faith that you want to go in, but it's not the Bible, okay? It's the same thing. Same exact thing. Same exact thing. This is the means by which you are identified as a humble, fearful, submissive servant of Yahweh who respects authority and does not defy authority. And because you understand that your head covering represents a symbol that respects authority, you purposely wear it for that reason, because I know what it means. Another example, I mean, Holy Spirit is just flooding me with examples right now. Crips and Bloods. Obviously I'm wearing red and blue on purple, right? Not, not, I said purple. Red and blue on purpose, right? It's a symbol. It's a symbol that what? It communicates to other gang members. They know, they speak that language. They know what that means when you come out as a crip in blue or when you come out as a blood in red. I know what that means. And what does that communicate to the bloods on the opposite, on the opposite end? Okay, they're not, they're not of our flock. That's, that's, the, that's the enemy, okay? So 
Christians, they act like, you know, you have so many different things in nature to call, to already parallel scriptural principles and ordinances too, but you act like you just can't understand it. Why I have to do it. Why? I don't think it's for all of us. It's like, it is. If Crips and Bloods can understand a simple concept like that in people who work in business corporations, why can't you understand the purpose and head covering in your Bible? I mean, where is your high school diploma? I need to see it. I need to fact check your high school diploma because this is not making any sense. You know, I, I don't know. So that should encourage you. If you truly fear Yahweh and you truly love him and you really want to be a part of the Christian faith, it should encourage you to want to wear it now that you know what it means. I hope this video has blessed you. I hope it has helped you. I'm going to go eat and I'm going to finish working on this dream. So... No more excuses for any of you, for any of us. There's no excuses. I never wear excuses. And if you want to hold fast to your excuses for why you don't have to do something and somebody is thoroughly teaching you and helping you understand the word of God, you can walk with your excuses right into the pits of hell and I will not be with you. And you can share your many excuses with the demons that are going to be tormenting you because that's where you're going to go. Just like that. So y'all have a blessed day.